Welcome to Web Handling. My name is Dave Roysom. In this video we will discuss one of the more difficult roller alignment challenges. Rollers that move. Most rollers are bolted to frames and do not move very far or very quickly. Exceptions are rollers that translate as part of their function. Rollers that move include accumulators, some dancers, and some winder components. The challenge is already high for any roller alignment because most will need to be precise to about the thickness of a human hair. How close rollers need to be aligned and how to achieve that alignment in general case are well enough described in the literature. To these challenges, we add more in the case of rollers that move. These include how to check the alignment of rollers that are not bolted to frames, the even greater risk of clearance and maintenance problems and compliance design problems, and finally, how to time the two ends together consistently through the entire stroke. Before we begin, we must decide which end of the stroke is most important. In the case of accumulators, it depends on the cultural practice of where the accumulator spends most of its time. On most systems, it is filled. On wrinkle-prone systems, it is not filled until the last possible minute. In the specific case of a rider roll on a two-drum winder, the rider roll and chuck spend more time at the upper end of the stroke. However, the lower position down in the drum pocket is far more critical. One of the biggest challenges of aligning translating or pivoting systems is that you must measure the relative end to end alignment with the roller off the stops. The reason for this is that the stops might cause the assembly to twist in its mounts. This makes the roller look like it's misaligned when the real problem is that the system is flexible and the stops are misadjusted. Since the cylinder seals are not perfect, the readings on both ends must be taken in quick succession. You often need to repeat measurements to double check for repeatability. Once you get a repeatable measurement, you can then proceed to align the roller in the most critical location. This is not done by moving the stops, which is actually the last step of the entire alignment procedure. Rather, it is usually done by turning the threaded bolts and chain eyes or cylinder clevises. Now it's time to check the timing of the system. To do this, you must at least measure at the other end of the stroke, again, off the stops for the reason given in the last slide. It is also best practice to measure mid-stroke. If all the measurements match within your tolerance for misalignment, you can go ahead and finish the alignment by setting the stops as appropriate for your particular application. If the measurements disagree and they are not procedural, then you need to look further. There are many design and maintenance issues that can conspire to cause alignment to change along the stroke. Poor link tolerances or wear are epidemic problems with chains. With gear racks, you can at least get machine tool quality racks so that the more challenging problem may be maintenance. Finally, clearance and compliance are common by poor design and by poor maintenance. The easiest way to check for clearance and compliance is to very firmly fix one end of the roller. Then go to the other end to try and move it up and down. The force you use should be appropriate to the equipment you are studying. If medium width, the load may be hundreds of pounds or kilograms. If you have wide paper machine, you may be looking at tons. In any case, the total movement can be measured with a dial indicator and should be less than the alignment tolerances which are in the order of one hair's thickness. Thank you so very much for watching this module in my Plant Practical series. If you want more information on roller alignment, you can search the Roysom Library Abbott app and see dozens of articles on the subject. Also, you can learn more from modules 4, 
72, and 73 of my Web 101 course.